you know, with such high stakes on the line, there's got to be drama between the ladies, I would imagine. How much of the hopeful's journey will the audience get to see? The audience gets to see more of the journey this year. Like I say, we start at their hometowns. You meet their parents. You see their hometowns. You see their pets in the background. We've even had, we have famous cows now from Annabelle in Maryland. Um, and I love that. It was awesome. And you will see more emotion because uh, it was just, it was a lot of pressure getting to the bubble. And then once they were there, you see a lot of release of emotion that they're there. But then we add our veterans into the mix and we had a week with just the rookies. So the veterans came in and weren't the first ones in line, so to speak. They came in and knew that we had already had a week with these rookies and they heard the buzz. The rookies are great. So it put a different tone of pressure on the veterans and an unfamiliar pressure you know it wasn't in their space and it it was unfamiliar to all of us i'm literally so like my nerves are heightened just by talking to you about how competitive this process probably is you know and as the group gets smaller making those cuts must get harder and harder for you how do you make those tough choices and for the ladies who get cut is there any chance that they can make it back next time or is it a one and done uh, it's definitely not one and done. In fact, you will see one of our star, our fifth year group leaders is Maddie from Utah. And her first year, she made it into training camp at 18 and got cut in training camp. She came back the next year. She made the team. She has developed as a dancer and developed as a leader um, through the years. And that evolution is, is my, my payback for my career is to see them grow and develop. Um, the conversations are tough. They're very hard for me to have, and they're harder for me to watch back. And I do, um, not take lightly how, you know, the fact that we are making a, a few dreams come true, but we're also disappointing. And I, I try to do my best to be honest and give them feedback. If, I can't encourage them to come back to our audition the next year. We have so many what I call comeback girls with great success stories. Some people, frankly, are just better at auditioning. That doesn't mean they're necessarily the stronger performer, but in an audition environment, some are just, you know, come from a pageant background or something where competition and auditions is just a way of life for them. Well, it's, it, you're reminding me because it was like, I was never good at standardized tests, but I was really good at school. And so I would exactly. just, you know, I wouldn't want to just be, judge just on my SAT scores. And to your point, you know, you go through so much with these ladies. It's an emotional roller coaster. What would you say is your favorite moment throughout this entire season? My favorite moment this season was actually seeing the rookies come to our bubble in person. We had basically, um, online dated for a while. You know, we, we, we knew them. I knew them very well. I knew as much as I could from an application and they answer some pretty forthright and honest questions on their application. So I felt like I knew um, Jada coming in or Annabelle from California, or, I mean, I could list them all out, but when I finally saw them in person and met them, it was, it was just, and we were distant. So it's not like we could hug or sit and giggle and chit chat. It's a serious environment, but that was magical for me. You know, shows like this one and Netflix's Cheer have brought the world of cheerleading to the screens of so many people. And now so many people understand how friggin' difficult this sport is. Do you wish cheerleading <laughs> had more representation out there in general, or do you see it getting there? Oh, I definitely think um, with our show and with Netflix's cheer show, it's out there. And of course, I'm in Texas. Um, so Texas is a cheerleading mecca of competitive cheer gyms. It is a huge sport and a huge industry. And um, they, are, they are athletes. Our style for our squad is more dance-based. For example, we have a Rockette this year. We have um, some dancers come from Broadway that don't have Broadway work right now. We have dancers coming from other NBA teams, other NFL teams, college dance teams, college cheer teams. So sidelines and performance in sports is no secret. And um, what probably is is now being seen is just how hard they work and how talented they are as athletes and dancers to reach this level of excellence. 
And Kelly, before I let you go, what do you think is the biggest misperception of cheerleaders in general that you would kind of like to reverse for the public out there? If you asked me that in the 80s, I would say people thought it was just kind of uh, rah-rah and, you know, pom-poms. But if it, but now I think I think the story's out. I mean, we have lady, all of our ladies have college degrees. Some have master's degrees. They all have their own careers. They're very, very impressive women. And that's what I like for people to continue to learn about, about this. Performance and dance is their expression of art, but they all have amazing careers outside of being a Dallas Cowboys cheerleader. And that's what I always like to um, promote on their behalf. They're just very, they're high achievers. Amen to that. They can do it all. Kelly, thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate you taking the time. Thank you. I enjoyed thank it. You. And everyone don't miss the new season of Dallas Cowboys cheerleaders making the team Tuesday, November 24th at 10, 9 central on CMT. We can all learn something here.